The thing about humans, Counselor Sharna said, her voice like static over a broken frequency, is that they don't negotiate when their temper flares. The Galactic Council Chamber was dark, the dim glow of stars outside the viewport, barely penetrating the gloom. Around the great circular table, representatives from every major species sat in rigid attention. The debate was reaching a dangerous climax. Humanity had become a topic of concern. They were unpredictable, explosive. Their anger had consequences, massive ones. Counselor Vector, a leathery-skinned Kasari, leaned forward, his narrow eyes blinking in disbelief. Anger. You base your judgment on their emotional outbursts. They are no more volatile than any other species. Sharnas shook her head slowly. No, Vector. You don't understand. Humans don't respond like us. When the Krillonians attacked them on Citrus, they retaliated with something else. Her voice dropped. It was unlike anything we had seen. The room shifted uncomfortably. Counselor Torag, a hulking member of the Raxith, a species known for their ferocity in battle, snorted. They survived a skirmish. That doesn't make them unique. Most species retaliate when provoked. Yes, Sharnas responded sharply. But most species strike with logic, precision. Humans, they rage. They destroy. She raised a hand, displaying a hollow image of the once. Beautiful citrus. Now, nothing but a scorched ruin. Do you think this was a calculated move? This was anger. Pure. Unfiltered. The council members murmured, glancing between themselves. Humans had spread through the galaxy quickly. Too quickly for many to keep track of their exploits. What they didn't know. What the council feared was what lay behind those moments when humans were pushed beyond their limits. Sharnas paused, letting the tension simmer in the room. And now, the incident at Galax Pass. We've been monitoring the human colonies, and the pattern repeats itself. When they are cornered when diplomacy fails, they don't retreat. Vector folded his arms, still unconvinced. Perhaps they are just effective at defense. No, Sharna said. It's more than that. They become something else. Torag growled, his impatience getting the better of him. Enough with the dramatics. What do you propose we do? Fear them because they get upset. Ridiculous. Sharnas remained silent, but her gaze flickered toward the far end of the table. Seated there was a representative from the humans. He had yet to speak, his face obscured by the shadows. His hands rested calmly on the table, though the sharpness in his eyes was unmistakable. It was Counselor Abrams. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of silence, Abrams leaned forward. His voice was steady, but his words cut through the tension like a blade. You're missing the point. The other counselors shifted uncomfortably. Abrams' presence was always an unsettling one. Humans were still relatively new to the council, and his demeanor didn't help. Sharna's lips tightened. We understand the point, Abrams. We're discussing it right now. No, you're discussing fear, Abrams said quietly, not understanding. Vektar narrowed his eyes. Enlighten us, then. What are we not understanding? Abrams met his gaze without hesitation. Humans don't fight for resources, territory, or even survival. We fight for each other. When one of us is hurt, attacked, or threatened, it's not about vengeance. It's about protection. And that he paused, letting the words settle in the air. That is what you should fear. The counselors exchanged uneasy glances. This was not a typical species they were dealing with. Humanity had always operated differently but it was becoming increasingly clear that no one truly understood why. Not until now. Counselor Torag scowled. We Raxith know war better than any. Protecting our kin is our primary motive in battle. What makes you different? Abram stood slowly, his figure cutting a stark silhouette against the dim light. His voice dropped to a low, dangerous tone. 
When humans get angry, we don't just retaliate. We make sure there's nothing left to threaten us again. The room fell silent, the weight of his words hanging heavily over the assembly. The hollow image of Citrus flickered again on the table, a reminder of the devastation humans could unleash when pushed too far. Now, Abrams continued, his gaze sweeping across the council, you have to ask yourselves, do you want to push us that far? The tension in the room reached a boiling point. The alien counselors shifted, their previous confidence faltering. For the first time, they truly began to comprehend the danger they were facing. Humanity wasn't like them. The council's deliberations stretched into the night, but no consensus emerged. Fear lingered in the room like smoke, but pride and denial clouded judgment. Counselor Vector was first to speak after Abram's warning. His voice trembled slightly, betraying his frustration. This is absurd. A species cannot be feared for what they might do. These humans you speak of, they're still bound by rules. They've never fought on a galactic scale. We would crush them. You don't understand, Sharnas replied, her voice sharp. You're thinking in terms of logic. Humans don't follow that when anger takes hold. They don't calculate outcomes or adhere to restraint. Enough, Vector snapped. You're making them sound like rabid animals. Sharnas met his eyes evenly. Perhaps that's closer to the truth than you realize. Abrams, still standing, watched in silence. The arrogance of the other counselors amused him, but beneath that amusement was the simmering reality he had lived through countless times. What happened when someone underestimated humanity's reaction to threats? They always paid a heavy price. Torag's low growl broke the silence. These humans, they haven't faced our kind in battle. All this talk of anger, of fury, it's nonsense. We have entire fleets, thousands of worlds. What are a few colonies compared to that? Abram's gaze hardened his voice like ice. A few colonies. That's where you're mistaken. Torag. Every human, no matter where they are, is connected. We don't see colonies. We see family. Attack one, and you've attacked us all. The counselors exchanged uneasy glances again. It was an alien concept to most of them. This idea of unyielding solidarity. Many species formed alliances for survival, but humans, they bonded through something deeper. Vector folded his arms, sneering. We'll see how strong this connection is when our fleets block their trade routes. Starve them out. Force their hand. They'll fall in line, just like everyone else. A smile played at Abram's lips. You really think that's how this will go? You think cutting off a supply line will make us bow? All you'll do is make us angry. And believe me, you don't want that. You overestimate your species, Vector retorted. We've seen your kind before. Bold, overconfident, but in the end, you break. Abrams turned his gaze to the council, his voice soft but carrying across the chamber. You've never seen us truly tested. Abrams' words hung in the air a quiet threat that settled like a weight on every member of the council. Vector's sneer faltered, the confidence in his tone wavering. Sharnas remained silent, observing the shift in the room's atmosphere. Even Torag, the massive Raxith warrior, shifted uncomfortably in his seat. There was something unsettling in Abram's calm. Then prove it, Vector said, his voice no longer as firm as before. Show us what makes humans different. What makes you dangerous enough to fear? Abram's smile didn't reach his eyes. You don't want that. The chamber's doors slid open with a soft hiss. A Kasari aide approached Vector, whispering something into his ear. The counselor's leathery face paled. His eyes darted nervously across the table before he stood abruptly, his chair scraping against the floor. We will recess for now, Vector announced, his voice strained. There are urgent matters to attend to. The council members exchanged glances, 
confused, but none dared question Vector's sudden departure. One by one, they followed suit. Sharnas remained seated, her eyes locked on Abrams. What is it? she asked quietly, sensing something had shifted. Abrams didn't answer immediately. He watched Vector leave the chamber, his fingers tapping rhythmically on the table. It started. Charnas' gaze sharpened. Without looking at her, Abrams spoke, his voice low. The retaliation. One of our colonies was attacked last week, a small mining outpost. Vector's people thought they could get away with it quietly. Charnas felt a chill crawl down her spine. Abrams finally turned to her, his expression unreadable, not officially. A rogue faction, they'll claim, but it doesn't matter. They've crossed a line. Sharnas leaned forward, her voice tense. What are you saying, Abrams? He met her gaze. I'm saying that by tomorrow, that faction, and every shit, base, or planet associated with them will be gone. Sharnas' breath caught, you mean. I mean gone, Sharnas. Wiped out. His tone was flat, emotionless. We warned them. They didn't listen. The next day, the council reconvened in a chamber filled with tension so thick it felt suffocating. Word had spread quickly. Overnight, something had happened. A ripple across the galaxy. Entire Kasari fleets had gone silent. Communications with their outlying colonies had been severed. No one knew the full extent of the damage, but the implications were clear. Vector entered last, his face ashen, the confident sneer replaced with a look of dread. He took his seat without a word, his hands trembling slightly as he placed them on the table. The room was deathly quiet. Counselor Torag, usually the first to speak, said nothing. Even he had heard the rumors. The destruction was swift, surgical. Entire star systems had gone dark. And it had all happened in the span of hours. Abram sat calmly at his usual spot, his expression neutral, his eyes watching the counselors with an unnerving calm. Sharnas broke the silence, her voice low. Abrams leaned back in his chair, his fingers steepled. What happened, he said slowly is that you finally understand. Vector's eyes flared with anger and fear. You, you, you monsters, how did you? We warned you, Abrams interrupted. Your faction attacked our people. We don't let that slide, ever. Vector slammed his fist on the table, his voice cracking. You annihilated entire fleets, civilian colonies. How is that justified? Abram's gaze didn't waver. You didn't listen. Vector, you thought we were bluffing. You assumed we'd act like the others. Negotiate, threaten, pull back. But humans don't work that way. Vector stared at him in horror. You wiped out my people over a single outpost. Abram's shook his head slowly. No, we wiped out your people because they thought they could kill us without consequence because they underestimated us. You made the mistake of thinking that human anger was something you could manage. The council chamber was dead silent. The other counselors sat frozen, their eyes darting between Abrams and Vector. Torag shifted uncomfortably, his massive form tensing, but even he knew better than to speak. Sharnas exhaled slowly. This is what you meant. Abrams nodded once. You push us far enough. We don't stop at retaliation. We eliminate the threat entirely. And if that means burning entire systems to the ground, we'll do it. Because to us, it's not just about winning. It's about making sure no one dares try again. The weight of his words crashed down on the room, a suffocating realization settling into the minds of every counselor present. This wasn't just a military response. This wasn't just a military response. This was human nature, anger, driven to its most dangerous conclusion. Vector slumped in his seat, his eyes wide with disbelief. He had underestimated them. They all had. 
Counselor Torag finally found his voice, though it was a shadow of its usual bravado. What now? Abram stood, his figure imposing as he glanced around the room. Now, 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 you understand. Humans don't seek war, but if you come for us, we'll make sure you regret it. We don't do things halfway. He turned toward the exit, leaving counsel in stunned silence. As the door slid shut behind him, the remaining counselors exchanged uneasy glances. They had just witnessed the true face of humanity, not as conquerors, but as protectors. Protectors who, when pushed too far, became the most dangerous force in the galaxy. Sharnas broke the silence, her voice barely above a whisper. We should have listened. No one disagreed. The Galactic Council now understood why humanity was feared. Not because they sought violence, but because when pushed to the brink, their rage left nothing standing.